So in part 9,000 of Mrs. Soap and Clay not understanding how shirts work, I don't understand this shirt because the, the lines, right, are very interesting because it's smooth on this side and has the, you know, like the seam on this side. But the tag, if I wear it like this with the smooth on the outside and the seams on the inside, the tag on the back is exposed. And I thought, well, maybe that's just the brand wanting people to know that it's a brand. But also the washing instructions are now on the outside too. So I don't, I'm pretty sure I have my shirt on inside out right now. And I just pointed that out to the internet. That has nothing to do with what we are doing today. And what we are doing today is continuing on with the all things water and soap playlist. And I will tell you more about today's episode, video, installment, thing in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for week 11 of year three, and we are finishing up the deep dive playlist into all things water in soap, and we are doing so in a pretty epic way, and that way is called using science to attack your designs, and I'm very excited about this because first, if you don't know my obsession with Auntie Clara, um, you know, go see Auntie Clara, go check out her website because she's amazing and she does such beautiful soaps using natural colorants and really stunning photography with all of it, but also approaching her design scientifically and playing with the lye concentrations to yield beautiful swirls. So that's what we are going to do today. We are going to be playing with the water amounts in three separate areas of soaps, two different soaps we're going to make and showing you how you can create beautiful, gorgeous, stunning swirls within the same batch of soap by just adjusting your water amounts for each section. And in one of these bars, we're going to do completely naked, so no colors, no scents, no nothing. And in the other bar, we're going to be using a very temperamental fragrance oil that while it smells amazing, I remember it being pretty finicky when I used it for my geode collection and showing you how you can use water reduction and or additions to your favor, even when working with the most temperamental of fragrance oils. So there's a lot going on in all of this. Let's get to the video and we can see all of this soapy magic in action. Okay, so in the last video, we did the benefits of the, uh, why don't you go ahead and, can you, can you focus on that, please? No? Hate it? There it is. So, we are doing a uh, one part water to one part lye. We are doing a two part water to one part lye and a three parts water to one part lye in the same batch of soap to show the advantages of water discounts as well as water additions as far as a design goes. Now, ghost swirls are some of my favorite soaps ever because the whole entire process of them really is, you are just using the different lye concentrations within the batch to create your design. So no need to put extra colors in there, no need to do actual swirls and take your chopstick to it, although you certainly can if you'd like, we are just doing it 
completely natural. And so I'm going to show you two different versions of this. One, I am going to use a completely naked soap. So it's still the basic three that we've been working with, with the same percentages and super fats that we've been working with. And I'm not putting any colorant in it at all. So you can see the differences in whites and beige and ecrus and all the things that you can get from different lye concentrations within the same batch of soap. Now, the other one that I am doing, it's still gonna be a one to one, a two to one, and a three to one, but I am going to be putting in a scent that not only discolors according to the website, but if I remember correctly, it kind of gave me some problems when I used it in the geode collection line that we did, you know, one or two years ago. So you'll be able to see it in both instances, both with something that's going to discolor. So say you were going to put one color into a batch of soap, what it would ultimately do, as well as one that won't. And creating really beautiful, awesome, you know, ghost swirls in the process. Now, I don't actually know if that's something that, if that you know, term ghost swirls is anything outside of Auntie Clara, but I love Auntie Clara. If you haven't gone to her website, you should totally go check it out. She has such beautiful photography for all of her soapy, you know, endeavors. She does gorgeous naturally colored soaps. She really loves doing the, you know, sculpted tops by using essentially impression mats and stuff that she pulls the soap from as it thickens up. And she makes really gorgeous ghost swirls as well using, again, just science. We're, we're playing with the lye concentrations of the three separate parts of each of these soaps to achieve a design. And that's really freaking cool. So with something like this, obviously for the first time you do this, I would really recommend you do it with an actual color, just because it makes it a little bit easier to see where the swirls are going. But as you're going to see in the pour of both of these, you're going to be able to tell the difference between the three pieces and the three different lye concentrations really early on because it does look different. The lye concentration, the percentage of your water to your lye within your soap oils, it changes the color almost immediately. And the reason why it's changing the color almost immediately is because the one-to-one, -one, for example, the lye isn't having to work as hard to do the saponification thing. So you're going through saponification faster. With the two to one and the three to one, you are delaying that process by a percent. And therefore that changes the overall look of the soap batter, which is always a very interesting thing to think about. Whenever we're troubleshooting recipes or soaps or whatnot, just based on a picture, it's always so hard to do because there are so many factors involved and even the well-meaning, you know, soapers that come out and say, here's my recipe. They don't give the rest of the information. They don't give the water, which is the first thing that I would always want to know. What is your, your lye concentration? They don't give the temperature of their oils or the room. And they don't give the process behind what they actually did with the soaping itself. Did they, well, the, the saponification itself, I guess. Did they leave it on the counter? Did they seep up? And so many things, so many factors can change what the soap ends up looking like. And as you can see with all of these, we're already getting different colors between, you know, number one and number two here. And so we will definitely be able to tell the difference when we start pouring this. And obviously we've discussed the practical benefits of, you know, doing a water discount in soap making and where you would want to do that and under what circumstances. But for me, I mean, just look at that. That's absolutely stunning. That is the exact same batch of soap, the exact same oils within that soap, you know, really whisked, you know, blended for the exact same amount of time. And there's such a difference between the three. So this is such a nice way to really incorporate beautiful designs for, say, somebody who doesn't like using colorants at all, right? They want to do an all-natural line. Or someone that has a very simple recipe and they only want to use, like, a rasul clay. Or a red clay. Or, you know, just something that's very simple and natural and not a lot of, you know, bells and whistles. 
but still allowing you to have some distinctive, you know, swirls and layers and what have you in the same batch of soap using the exact same ingredients and the only thing that changes is your lye concentration. It's absolutely magical. Now, with all of this, it is a very thin soap right now, and you can really see the difference. Like, this didn't really look like it was fully emulsified, right? Because it's not the color that we're used to seeing in soap, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And this one, also fully emulsified, it's fine, but it's, it's thin. And that's one of the dangers when you were working with uh, water, well, discounts or additions, really, when you are not adding anything extra in. And that's true of really all soaps. Whenever you are messing with soap at all and you're not adding in your colors or your scents, every time that you take your whisk or your spatula or your stir stick back to that soap to incorporate a scent or a color or what have you, it's really moving around all of the you know soap oils and the lye solution and really ensuring that you're really going to hit emulsion and you therefore will go through saponification. But with something like this, since it's a very fast mix, you do run the risk of it falling out of solution and getting a little bit wonky if you have not hit emulsion. So that would be my only suggestion. If you're going to try things like this, definitely make sure that you are very familiar with emulsion and also what lye heavy soap looks like. I have done videos on both on the channel if you are interested in those. But aside from that, you can do any number of things with this. You can layer these three colors and watch what they do after saponification. You can do just, you know, kind of a messy swirl, with, which is what I'm doing here. And then you can take a hanger to it or a stir stick or a skewer or whatever or you can do literally just what I'm doing and do the messy swirls and do not take anything to it. And you're going to end up with some really interesting detail from all of the bars of soap when you cut it. It's actually pretty magical and it's just a scientific way of approaching the design aspect of soap. Now, for this next batch of soap, I wanted to do this for a number of reasons. One, I wanted to show you kind of in real time what it's looking like when you are working with a scent that discolors. But two, there was a conversation in the Discord about, I think, specifically this line from Sierra Candles. And I had remembered that this particular scent did some kind of spicy things to my soap recipe in that I'm pretty sure this was the one that turned my activated charcoal soap green and also yielded a rock hard bar of soap where nothing else, none of the other, you know, recipes or fragrances within that line did. And that was 100% because of the fragrance oil, because the, well, the oil blend was exactly the same. And so I wanted to play with this here and show you just how much a water addition can help fragrances that are going to be spicy. And what I mean by spicy is just that, it accelerates like a mother. Like that is very quick, that, that, that's a lot. It immediately thickened up. And that's, again, that's the one-to-one. -one. So one part water, one part lye, and putting in the same amount of fragrance into it as the other two. It got super thick, super fast. And I want you to pay attention to all three of these containers. So this is going to be the two times water. And then the next one is the three times water. I want you to pay attention to their fluidity throughout the pour. This is something that's very important, especially since we are always talking about and always afraid of the scents that accelerate. We've mostly learned to walk around the scents that discolor, right? Like we're fine with the discoloration. We can use that to our advantage. But if there's a scent that accelerates, people tend to shy away from it. And you don't have to. If you have a recipe that has more water in it, if you increase the water, that is to say, you're more likely to still have a successful pour. And if you end up with uh, the, the far left one there for a scent that 
usually is not supposed to, you know, accelerate. I don't think the first thing for you to do is to put it on blast, put the company on blast or go like give it a bad review or whatever on, you know, their, their website. I think the first step is to look at your actual recipe and then look at their soaping notes because really good companies out there that sell the fragrance oils, they generally tell you what recipe they used and what the water amount was for their tests when they got the results that they got. And so I think a lot of times, as we're seeing here, it could be a water issue. You could have too little water in your batch. And that, again, that is very, that is a very thick soap. It's just, oh my God. I don't think I've had soap that thick since, I don't even know when. I am certain I've never showed you guys anything like this on the channel, but this is very thick. It's pliable, almost like soap dough at that point. Also, soap dough. You want good soap dough, you can decrease your, your water amount too. But now here's number two, so the two to one ratio. And yeah, it's thickening up because that's what that fragrance wants to do. But look, three times water. What is that doing? That's beautiful. That's pouring lovely. That's the way that I want all of my soap batter to be. And it's just by nature of adding more water to a fragrance that, you know, was behaving badly that made it all better. And so, you know, just keep that in mind for sure. Don't ever, I don't know, if you find a scent that it, it accelerated on you, don't just want to throw it in the bin or just push it to the back of your cabinet never to be used again because, you know, obviously we hate it and no. Just try increasing your water amount and see if that helps. For the discoloration, well, it's still going to discolor. I didn't do anything to it to ensure that it won't or to help it not. I, it's still going to discolor because that was one of the other points of, you know, showing you the one that has fragrance in it. But just be advised, this is gonna be the weirdest pour and cut in the world. But, you know, it's it's to show you. So we'll definitely be able to see all three of the colors and lye concentrations represented within all of that. But just keep that in mind that when you have a weird fragrance that's not behaving well, you can fix it. Just add some more water. It usually works in most situations. And it's not diluting the fragrance in any way. It's not doing anything bad to the fragrance. It's essentially making a fragrance that is known to be tricky work for you. And I love to see it. Seriously though, that is like soap dough. Oh my goodness. That is absolutely wild. By the by, I don't know if I said in all of this, but everything was being poured between 90 and 100 degrees for this, which is for both of the soaps, which is normally a little bit higher than what I soap at. I tend to soap at room temperature for everything. And in, you know, the middle of winter, it's whatever temperature the soap shop is. And that's usually cold. But that's another way that you could probably make these a little bit less thick is soaping at a lower temperature. But again, one of the best ways, just like with hot process, add more water. As we showed with the first video in this series, see, look how fluid that is. It's absolutely delightful. As we showed within the first series, the first video of this series, you really, while you can technically go overboard with the amount of water that you put in it, no reasonable soaper really would. And so, yeah, you can definitely increase your water amount to any area of your pore, but certainly within your lye solution to help you with your you know, fragrances that are misbehaving. So that's all. Take that for what it is. Now, these particular soaps, they are not going to be sea popped or gelled. They're going to sit out on the counter and we are going to let them do their magic right here. So we have an idea of what it looks like for the people that do not sea pop. So let's go check that out. Okay, and on to the reveal of both of these. And again, not sea popped. Uh, whatever gel is occurring is occurring on its own because of the different temperatures that the different pieces of the soap are going through. 
because of the lye concentration. They have sat overnight, so these soaps are about 12 hours old, I would say, at this point. And they are coming out of the containers no problem whatsoever. Nothing is sticking. And you can see some very beautiful partial gels going on throughout that in a more artistic way. And same with that one. It is definitely discoloring and it is, wow, see that? That's a full gel right there with that one-to-one -one ratio. That's wild. See how shiny and translucent it is? Yep. So there is a lot to be said about lye concentration and gels. If you do not want your soaps to go through gel ever, add more water. And if you always want them to go through gel, add less is really the, that, that's the thing. But let's see what these ultimately end up looking like. And again, 12 hours old. So for this one, there will be no more discoloration, but look at that. There's actually like a texture to it, right? It's like, it's almost like a piece of art where there was shading or something done underneath the lighter bits. And so you can see the very, very white tones and the mid tones and the more beigey tones within the entire bar of soap. So just think how pretty that would be if it was somebody that was doing this intentionally and wanted to create a cool design and like, you know, took a, a skewer or something to it and swirled that stuff around. But as it stands, that's lovely. That's very pretty. It's just, again, it's a very, and just think about what that would look like with like a red clay or an activated charcoal or whatever. It is a very beautiful way to add really cool interest to your soaps without having to get all of the micas out and all of the, you know, hassle. And really the only thing that you have to do is what you do at the beginning ever anyway, which is your maths. You just do it three times. It's no big deal. Or however many times you want, obviously. But, and then with this one, let's see what we have going on here. Yeah, so definite, you can see the difference between all three. The discoloration is already starting from the actual soap itself, from the fragrance itself. And you can, you can totally see where I had the one-to-ones in there because I just globbed them in like soap dough. And that one down there, I don't know if this is going to discolor brown, but if it does, the one that's dead center in the middle, it's totally going to look like poo. It's a, it's a poo. That one's not. That one's just, I don't know. They could be fun like leopard print soap. You know, that could totally work. But yeah, you can absolutely see how the differences in your water concentration react in real time just in the same, you know, batch of soap. And also, it's all still soap. It's beautiful. It's fun. It's science. And it's really very cool. So there's water discount plus water addition in a gorgeous design. And there they are, uh, the ghost swirls. As far as I'm concerned, that's what they're called because Auntie Clara calls them that and I stand Auntie Clara. So there's that. And you got to see firsthand, well, a lot of things, really. You got to see how beautiful the soap ends up being, again, just by nature of changing the water amounts in different portions of your actual pour, making really beautiful designs and a very cool texture within that soap as well. But you also got to see what an on-the-fly soap dough could be. I mean, seriously, keep that in mind. You saw how pliable that one-to-one -one ratio was with the fragrance oil. That's something that I could have just like put some mica in and messed around with or whatever and created a soap dough creation or that batch of soap right there on the fly. Could have done that. That's wild. File that away for sure. And you also got to see how adding more water really does help those fragrances that are kind of finicky and will get a little bit spicy within your pores. It's very cool. Now, for the end of all of this, I didn't actually manage to save any of these bars. I have no idea where they went, but I did have an end piece. And so... Just as an update, this is what this guy looks like. Uh, it's about two weeks after the actual pour. And so it's definitely darkening up. It's becoming a nice brown. You can see how that's probably a really cool like cow type pattern or a leopard print or something. You can totally do something with that, working with a fragrance that discolors. And then also this guy here, there it is. 
And also this guy here, it didn't really change much within all of it, but it's very, very lovely, all of the different swirls and whatnot. Very gorgeous. Ignore my hands, okay? I got in a fight with a bag of bath bomb dye, and it won. But my fingers are forever stained as a result. Always wear gloves, kids. But anyway, yes, there's that. So that is the end of this playlist. I hope by the end of this you have a better handle on, you know, water discounts uh, as well as water additions. What full water is, not a thing. What lye concentration is, definitely a thing. How you should be figuring out your water, not as a percentage of your oils. It's kind of an arbitrary nothing at that point. So do it via your lye, for sure. Lye concentration and parts are basically the same thing mathematically. As well as when you can utilize both a water reduction as well as a water addition. So I hope you had a lot of fun with this. And I always enjoy answering the questions from the Sudzers. And if it's something, as I've said in these playlists, that is going to be going to require longer than just, you know, a response on Discord or in a comment, I build a playlist around it to hopefully give you a better working knowledge so you can be more confident and experienced soap makers throughout your soapy journey. So I hope I helped in that endeavor. And if you have any ideas for a new playlist or something that's just been on your mind and you want, you know, a question answered, let me know. I'm more than happy to make a playlist, do a deep dive, or, you know, like using YouTube shorts or whatever, which I do hope to be using pretty soon to answer some of the questions that are commonly cropping up, but don't require like a full deep dive or even really a full video, just an explanation that's needed. So, you know, ask, let me know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, for the Sudzers, obviously, thank you. Like, thank you for existing and being here. Like, you're awesome. And also, thank you for reminding me that um, I didn't actually put out the Project Soapway Challenge number six. I filmed that guy weeks ago, and I, I thought that I made that video live. But since I didn't, and the deadline for it was like, I don't know, tomorrow to get your submission in, I'm going to have to go ahead and refilm that because it actually has dates. So I'll get on that tomorrow probably because I'm tired I'm still sick and so I'm gonna go not do that but as a spoiler if you want to start prepping it's uh, a lotion I'm gonna be making a lotion it's gonna be fun so yeah thank you for letting me know that I didn't do that thing you guys are awesome as I said I'm gonna go lay down and rest so thank you for joining me for another playlist all the YouTube things subscribe whatever do the thing Thank you, Sudzers, for existing. You guys are my people. You're my everything. Thank you. I gotta go. It's just time to go. So I will see you all again tomorrow for... I have no idea what we're doing. But it'll be fun. So be fun. Bye.